Of course, as you've heard already from the Deputy Chief of Staff to the President, uh, we moved the venue here uh, to this uh, sunlit, uh, bright environment devoid of uh, uh, air conditioners and uh, all everything that is uh, not completely green. Uh, just uh, symbolically to show that um, we are not just talking about um, a green environment and a green economy, but that we're also uh, ready for the practice of it. I see, of course, that uh, many of us are not reacting particularly well to the heat. Uh, but uh, let me say that um, those of us who have not, at this point, used our handkerchiefs are obviously far ahead in terms of our commitment uh, to uh, climate change and all of that. But uh, I had offered earlier, uh, the Honorable Minister of Finance, I offered her a handkerchief because I realized that she also uh, was at the point where uh, she needed one. But let me just say, let me just say, you know, uh, that we're all very excited. Uh, I must congratulate and commend the management of NSIA and uh, VTOL uh, on this very historic and very important uh, collaboration. I think that one of the things that this tells us, the, the, the Carbon Vista Fund tells us, is that we are set for uh, the sorts of collaboration that are required between the public sector, the private sector, and of course uh, the third sector, uh, the uh, civil society. The truth of the matter is that we are left with no choice today uh, in the world. And for many who are taking uh, the developments in the whole climate change story seriously, it's evident that every day reminds us that we are now, uh, well, we get closer and closer to the point of no return. And that if we are not careful, we may indeed find ourselves with a tragedy of immense proportions. Some have said that the, the end of the planet or the death of the planet will come with neglect of uh, the climate and neglect of what we have been told already. Uh, the IPCC, uh, barely two weeks ago, issued a statement saying that um, if nothing was done, we would approach the 1.50 uh, degrees Celsius, the point where, of course, we, every one of us realizes, in terms of warming, would be catastrophic, well ahead of the 2030s, if care is not taken. So everyone, every one of us, and every responsible corporate citizen is already beginning to think in terms of what to do and how to do it. But there are many, there are many issues in what we describe as the energy transition process, which simply means the transition to uh, net zero emissions, transition to a safer, cleaner environment, a safer, greener environment for everyone. That process is a tough, is a tough process tough for those of us who are gas-rich countries, because obviously, not just gas-rich, but fossil fuel-rich countries, because obviously uh, fossil fuels are possibly some of the major, uh, biggest emitters of, of carbon. But for those countries such as ours that are fossil fuel-rich, we also find ourselves in, in a situation where we're energy poor, in other words, uh, most of our people do not have power, despite the fact that we have a lot of fossil fuels. So while the world is saying that the safest thing to do is to decommission all our fossil fuel projects and not use fossil fuels, not use oil, and uh, have only a restricted use of gas, we also are saying that, yes, that is true. But there must be a way that in, in this transition process where gas, you know, especially gas, you know, is still used, especially for industrialization purposes, 
because we cannot do otherwise. I mean, our people, of course, need power. Even for clean cooking purposes, we need to have uh, we need to have gas. So the whole so that so but but that is not the end of the story. So while we talk about climate justice and saying that the transition must be a fair one, and saying that we still require fossil fuels for this uh, for for several purposes, we must also agree that there is a new way. There is a new way. There is a way by which Africa and indeed Nigeria can benefit immensely from what is coming to us. In other words, Africa can become the first truly green civilization, the first civilization on Earth to use renewable fuels for purposes of a transformative uh, economic journey. And how can we do that? Of course, we can do that because, first of all, we are the lowest emitters today. And if we are going to develop our industry for the rest of the world. We can start from where we are today. We do not have to start from where the, the rest of the world, has, uh, especially the global north, is at the moment. If we are the least emitters and we're able to use green energy effectively, we're able to use the young population that we have, we're able to, manu to, to, to effectively deploy green manufacturing, on the scale that would be required to become the global factory of the world, the global green factory of the world, and the global green power of the world. We can indeed do something that is revolutionary and different. And this is one of the reasons why I think that what we're seeing today, this kind of collaboration between the NSIA and uh, the and um, VITO, is an important one. Because the pipeline of projects that they are talking about are the sort of projects that will make us a truly green economy and that can cause us to realize that dream that we're, that, we're, that we're talking about. So I'm extremely excited about this collaboration. And also to note, as has been said already, uh, both by uh, the managing director of uh, NSI, as well as um, the head of VITO, that we're also we're trying to develop uh, a carbon market, the African carbon market. But I think most uh, importantly, of course, the Nigerian carbon market, which we have, of course, uh, is in process, and we're talking about the uh, the um, Director General of the National Council on Climate Change is uh, working on this also fully. I think that carbon market initiative is crucial. Because, again, it is one of the very important economic opportunities that we have and, we, and, which, we must, and which we must use. The, uh, I'm also glad to note, of course, that uh, VITO uh, is uh, one of the more important carbon emission traders today. And they, you know, have, I think, since 2020 or thereabouts, shown that there is a lot to be done around the carbon trading area. And I believe that if we do it right here, uh, we can truly turn this into a massive economic opportunity for ourselves. So I'd like to thank uh, all of those who have made this uh, effort possible and to say that collaboration is the way. All through this journey, in the past few years, we've seen a lot of work being done by some of our partners, C4All, uh, uh, the Global Energy for People and Planet, uh, of course, uh, the uh, Climate Change Council Office, which only, has only just recently started, but has shown a lot of dynamism and innovativeness, and um, some of our other partners uh, here and there. So I'd like to thank you all for the great effort that has brought us to this point, and to say that um, this, sort of, uh, this sort of collaboration is only the beginning. We have to do a lot more, and we have to demonstrate that we are capable of uh, being not just a victim in the uh, climate change story, but an important catalyst and an important innovator for making our world greener and for introducing uh, to, our, to our own people a, a more prosperous economy based uh, on the green initiatives that, uh, that we have. So to thank you all very much and to wish uh, us great success, all of us, in this, uh, in the carbon, uh, carbon booster fund, uh, and to hope that uh, we will do 
the carbon visitor fund will be uh, bigger and bigger. We're told that you're going to attract a lot of investments from uh, other uh, stakeholders. But I want to say that this is such an incredible opportunity and we must not leave it. Uh, we, we must not leave it to uh, just be a 50 million fund. Everything that we need to do as government and as uh, private sector and um, the Honourable Minister of Finance has said that we're going to be working very closely with uh, the fund to ensure that this is supported and that it re really and truly not only becomes more sizable but achieves all of its objectives. Thank you very much uh, for listening. Thank you.